G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, sad day evening here in Australia and I apologise for not putting in a video yesterday but we got uh, sports grand finals going on here in Australia, particularly rugby league and I'm right into that, well not grand finals, sorry, semi-finals, quarter-finals going on and I'm right into that so my apologies for not being able to put a video out yesterday. But I'm back here today. Alright, the dead cat bounce theory. It's live and active right at the moment. Now it hasn't completed yet, so I'm not going to say that we're in a dead cat bounce, but when we get to the charts, we'll start to have a look that it's definitely looking like one at the moment. But let's have a look at how the actual markets are doing. So still under one point, uh, sorry, still under two trillion and going down. Now down another 4%. Bitcoin dominance rising. It's usually what happens in a falling market. Most people get out of altcoins and those who stay in the game generally have, you know, a lot of or most of whatever they have still in the game in Bitcoin and a lot go into stable coins. So things aren't looking pretty at the moment. But it's not completely awful. Look, we do have a little bit of volume there, which is nice. And gas prices have come way down as well. So if you want to do anything on Ethereum, now might be the time to do it. All right. We can see it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's definitely some things that are up, but most things are generally down at the moment. Hence why we're down 4.3%. So in the top 100, what's done the best then? What's had the biggest gains? Because there's always outliers. Right, Seller Network uh, has been on a bit of a run, as you can see, up nearly 40%, 36%. Uh, Harmony doing nice, up 18%. Tezos, Phantom, Luna, Atom. So we got some nice movers there. But there's only a few kind of movers and, you know, a couple of nice double digits. And then we're into just some low single digits. And then we are pretty much just into kind of stable coins and things like that. Losses, though, considering the whole market's down 4.3%. There we go, OKB, 20%, Huobi, 20%, Filecoin, 12%, uh, Bitcoin Cash, 12%, Curve, Hedera, Bitcoin SV, I don't know how that's even still around, uh, Thor Rune Chain, or Rune Thor Chain, sorry. So plenty of losses there. So again, things aren't looking so great. Now this is what worries me the most though. We spoke about the dead cat bounce. There was our high. We said in another lower high, we said in a lower high, then we said in uh, our, our lowest low so far. And we have had a bounce back, which is great, but our first high only came back to some old resistance and got rejected, then managed to break through. But so this is getting lower, getting lower, getting lower. And this is where we are right now. And we're in the middle of a weekend. So chances are we could go lower. Now, not guaranteed, but at the moment, that really does tend to be the theme. So this is definitely looking dead cat bounce-ish at the moment. But it hasn't confirmed. It's not really going to be a dead cat bounce until we get down below about sort of 29, 30,000. If we go below that, then this is definitely a dead cat bounce. At any stage, this can roll over, but then start to pick up and go back up. But every time it continues to get lower, it's definitely looking more like that it's going to be a dead cat bounce. Really, we need to hold this, which is about sort of 38,000. If we don't go below 38,000, then, you know, and we start to make our way back and we get break these uh, kind of things here, then we can start to count out the dead cat bounce. But at the moment, really, 44,000 or 45,000, 48,500, 54,500. We need to get above, particularly really this, you know, breaking these is nice, but if we don't get above this, this is can technically still be a dead cat bounce. And really, to say we're in a another bull market, we need to get uh, above fifty, uh, sorry, sixty four thousand. Because again, we could easily come up to here and not quite make it, and then fall lower. That's a little bit less likely that we'd nearly come back up here, uh, touch it, and then roll over. But this is just not looking great. That's a lower high than our old all-time high. Then we've had another lower high. Then we've had another lower high, and we're still lower at the moment. So buckle your seats, ladies and gentlemen, is what I will say. It is looking like a dead cat bounce at the moment. But I must stress that it's just how it looks. It doesn't mean it is. It needs to go down below. Yeah, really, I'd say at 38,000, it'd be pretty hard for it not to automatically fall pretty much down to about here. I mean, we've got a little bit of support kind of in and around here, so maybe it could pull up at 34,000, 
but I think there's a good chance it gets down to sort of 30,000 and then really if it breaks 30,000 as people have said a number of people think we need to come back down to around about here probably 24,000 and retest that before we can make our way back up so what am I doing and again I never offer financial advice I'm just giving you my personal opinion on what I see happening and what I'm doing I'm not investing in altcoins at the moment because this is looking like a dead cat bounce and until that changes I won't be touching altcoins until Bitcoin is back over fifty two and a half thousand dollars until then I'm putting about 30 percent I might even go a little bit more again it'll really have to wait and see what happens over the next few days but 30 to maybe even 40 percent of my DCA is going into stable coins and then the other let's say sort of 50 to maybe 70 percent depending on sort of where I am will go into Ethereum and Bitcoin but I'm not touching any of the other uh, altcoins at the moment I don't care how good a price they are because until this stops looking like a dead cat bounce I don't want to be putting my money into altcoins that are going to get absolutely brutalized Bitcoin is the most stable one and outside of Bitcoin the only other altcoin that I'm com you know as completely sold on as you can be is ethereum but even that still has a question hanging over its head the other altcoins they're all more sort of speculative plays so that's what i'll be doing focusing on bitcoin and ethereum but more so stable coins until i see a legitimate change in this market structure because at the moment it's not looking great okay just two stories i wanted to bring to you Ripple, they have granted $2 million to promote NFT solutions on the XRP ledger. Now, if you're still sort of new to crypto, not all NFTs are these just, you know, uh, Axie Infinity type, you know, things like that and stuff that you're going to find in games. There is NFTs that will have real world use that will actually be used with businesses and things like that. And that's the NFTs that they're leaning more towards, I'm quite sure, as opposed to the gaming NFT ones. But again, I don't know that for sure, but I just know that they've spoken about that before. And what they did is they distributed $2 million in total value among 25 chosen applicants from 10 different countries. So again, this is how they get that adoption sort of worldwide. You know, they're not focusing on any one area. They're giving countries all over the place the you know, ability to come in and uh, help solve the problem for how they get NFTs on the XRP ledger. Uh, and two million divided by ten that's two hundred thousand uh, dollars to each of them so very interesting and particularly that you know again with all this SEC FUD and stuff that's going on ripple are still out there and active you know they're active in the market and not just in selling XRP they're having a lot uh, harder time selling that stuff uh, with this SEC than what they normally would but they're out actively still trying to build the XRP ledger build all the gateways and things like that so this is at least somewhat positive news for XR, for Ripple and XRP but really until the SEC thing is sorted however long that may take and you know there was lots of speculation that it was coming uh, in the next few weeks it could easily drag on for another year or two that is completely possible just something you need to keep in mind I do like ripple I will be putting uh, more money into ripple uh, but again at the moment this market structure is just putting me off from chasing any altcoins at the moment I need to see Bitcoin change and again unless some other coins you know we move away from Bitcoin dictating the market which we haven't really on occasions another altcoin may sort of lead the market for a minute but ultimately Bitcoin still determines exactly where this market's going and as Bitcoin's going down so are all the other altcoins if we get some sideways movement the altcoins can do good for a while or we get Bitcoin pushing up we get the altcoins to do well but once Bitcoin turns to the dark side i.e. downwards uh, it is not pretty for those altcoins right last but not least so Kentucky, the state of Kentucky, has sent a cease and desist order to crypto lending platform Celsius over their interest-bearing accounts. So six days ago, the securities regulator from New Jersey and Texas cracked down on the cryptocurrency lending platform Celsius. Additionally, Alabama Securities Commission uh, joined in and filed a cease and desist order against Celsius. And now, state of Kentucky is doing the same. Now, it doesn't mean it's all over, but this is not looking great uh, you know for the crypto space at the moment now Celsius can simply stop uh, operating inside the US if that becomes a problem because that's the only place that's trying to stop them at the moment 
but the problem is that will generally have a flow on effect that if you know the states lock uh, Celsius down a lot of other countries will then just simply follow suit so this war is not over yet you know traditional finance which is you know heavily uh, in the governments they are fighting to try and keep their old system alive because they are not ready and they don't have control of this hence why they go they are going to do everything they can uh, to put a stop to this so it's really sad uh, for me I'm not panicking I'm not taking all my money out of Celsius or anything like that but there is definitely a battle ahead and again this stuff could drag on for you know months to years uh, I don't think it's going to be sorted in weeks but I could be completely wrong and I hope I am wrong all right look that's all I wanted to bring to you is those two stories but particularly this the dead cat bounce it, it's in play at the moment you know, just be careful of people telling you, no, this is all still bullish. We're not going to know. And again, we can't really say that this is bullish until we break 52,000. We could come up and get almost there, but then roll over and come back down. This is what a dead cat bounce looks like. This is just a, uh, a more elongated dead cat bounce, but it is still a dead cat bounce. We have our high, we make a, make a low. We start to pump up, everyone thinks it's all good, and then we roll over, and then we start to make even lower lows than what we had before. So be careful, stay safe. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.